welcome to Visions of Success Internet Talk Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Fred Simkowski. You know, someone once said that success is 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration. Well, I believe that you need just as much inspiration, if not more, than just perspiration. I mean, after all, all the sweat in the world isn't going to make you successful unless you are inspired. This is the place to go to seek insights, inspiration, advice, tricks, tips on how to attain the life and career success you've always dreamed of, wanted, and desired. Today, I have a returning guest, Justin Brown. Let me remind you who Justin is. He is a well-known speaker, he's an author, and diversity instructor in the field of higher education, and he currently works at as the resident director at Westchester University in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Now, Justin created the Diversity Awareness Program, DAP, a program dedicated to raising awareness and educating college campuses about the importance of diversity and the embracing of all cultures and backgrounds. Now, DAP has successfully grown in popularity, having visited over 100 colleges and universities and over 20 chapters established within those institutions. Now, if you remember... Justin was on the show back in January on the 29th, and we spoke about when multicultural competency meets real reality. Now, today, we have an even better discussion. We're going to talk about his new book, which is, ugh, not another diversity book. So, Justin, how are you today? Hey, Doc Fred, how you doing? I'm doing well. Great. So let's let's get right into this because not another diversity book. You know, it's like everybody writes them, right? So right. That's so right. let's start by so tell us, okay, a little about the new book. Don't, you know, don't tell them the whole book because we want them to buy it. Okay, but give them an <laughs> idea. Give them an idea what the book is about. Right, right, right. Well, Dr. Fred, thank you for, again, having me on your on your show. Um, well, an, uh, another diversity book is based off the last 10 years uh, of my experiences doing diversity work. Um, during the DAP program, Diversity Awareness Program, uh, we do a lot of different games, activities, modules, social experiments, team builders, as well as icebreakers, all dealing with multicultural competence. That's learning about um, differences in gender, uh, inequity, intersectionality, media, women's issues, stereotypes, prejudices, racism, everything. Um, and there have been a lot of interesting stories, scenarios, uh, funny quips that have happened during these trainings. So this book is just uh, essentially a pulse check on America saying, hey, look, this is what I'm seeing as current standards across the country. Um, this is what uh, experiences I've gone through among my colleagues, my friends, my family." And just the outrageous encounters that I've had with people from all walks of life. So now their stories become your stories. And uh, this book is truly a gift from my heart to your mind. And uh, I really want to be able to shift uh, people's paradigms regarding racism, prejudices, and stereotypes. Um, And the book pulls no punches. It puts everything on the table. And it's designed uh, for anyone who desires to experience life through the eyes of the other. Wow. So... You know, so I guess the idea to come up with a book like this was, okay, to really add to what's going on out there and really clarify a lot of the stuff that goes on out there that others don't necessarily do a good job at. Right. Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Go ahead. So, you know... My goal is that, you know, whether you're a seasoned veteran understanding diversity or 
you're just a beginner or you're seeing the things that are taking place in the country and you don't know where you fall in with that, this book is able, you know, it was made and designed to help individuals through all that. Um, it's not a book that's going to shame you. It's not going to a book that's going to make you feel bad about yourself. I mean, I think that everything that's written in every chapter is designed to give both uh, sides of the story and give both perspectives. And it's designed so that individuals can understand where they are in their understanding uh, when it comes to the awareness of diversity and cultural awareness. Oh, yeah, and I think that's really the most important part of it, okay? I don't think people really have a good idea, you know? So what what is your favorite chapter in the book? My favorite chapter? Wow, that's a... That's a very good question. Uh, well, there's a few chapters that I really, really like. I don't know if I necessarily um, have a favorite. Um, I know that I have a chapter that touches upon uh, the Black Lives Matter movement because there's a lot of controversy when it comes to the movement and, um, you know, what individuals think regarding what they see in the media versus what's actually taking place. Um, There's a chapter on women's issues. I think that women's issues are never brought to the forefront of conversation. You know, Um, there there aren't too many women in politics, let alone um, having the power or ability to change policy. So I don't think that they're able to benefit from a lot of things that happen in the country. They need a voice. They need to be able to have the freedom to do what they they need to do, and men need to step out of the way. So I definitely have a chapter on that. but I think my favorite chapter uh, is probably the last one. Um, it's called My Final Thoughts. And what I think is so special about this chapter is that normally when you get to the end of a book, the last chapter kind of sums up everything. You know, it, it creates a conclusion to each chapter and everything is wrapped up in a nice neat bow. And uh, I don't think that that's something that you can do for diversity. It's not something that you could just wrap up and have a conclusion to. It's very fluid, um, it's ever-changing, and it's flexible. So I actually leave all of the chapters open-ended because I want to challenge the individuals who are reading them. I want them to uh, continue to process and to continue to um, have moments of thought and not ever get to a point where they think that they have arrived because even me as a diversity trainer, I have also not arrived. And uh, I want individuals to feel empowered and to continue to ask questions. So uh, the final thoughts are just basically life lessons I've learned um, throughout my life. And uh, those chap- that chapter has everything in it. Wonderful. Now, you know, this is really, you know, and tell me if I'm wrong, but this is really about making sure that people are really, if you will, listening to both sides of the fence. Okay. All too often, I think, in the media that we have, whether it's online, whether it's the TV, whether it's the radio, everything is always given it from one side or the other. Okay. And I think this book, you know, really gets to the heart that, yes, there is two sides to every story, but you got to take the time to listen and, and absorb it. Isn't that what it's about? Right, 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 right. Um, In Chapter 2, we talk about this activity that I play with some of the participants called This or That. When we talk about racial issues that are in the country, we only talk about issues dealing with people who are of color and people who are white. And we often negate and forget about our individuals from Asian background, um, Latinx background, um, our individuals from the LGBTQI uh, background, you know, all of those individuals also have voices in our society, and things can't be this or that. They can't be black or white. There has to be a gray area. That gray area comes when individuals take the time to be empathetic, uh, take the time to listen to other people's point of view, and to also be able to have that experience. Uh, we talk about people all the time when we're like, hey, how many of you want to have a diverse experience? And everybody raises their hand, of course. And I say, how come <laughs> of you are actually... How many of you are actually doing it? And and then all the hands go down. So, you know, it's not it's the time of talk is over, Doc Fred. The time to act is now. Just like when we when we talk about professors or people that are in the student affairs um, field, and they're like, oh, I'm an ally. I'm an ally for these uh, minority groups. Or I'm an ally for those from the LGBTQA community. 
and they put this little sticker on their door saying, oh, this is a safe space. <laughs> Yet none of those people from those communities are in those spaces because that's not where they feel their strength emanates from or they don't feel welcome in those spaces. we got to move beyond these stickers. Ally is not something you say. It's not something you wear proudly. Ally, being an ally is something that you do. It's a call to action. It's being involved in the movement and being involved in the community. So it's just reshaping some of these things that other individuals um, are thinking and then uh, also adding some humor to it. I know that you're laughing uh, through some of the things that we're saying. You will definitely get a lot of laughs through this book. Um, it's, it's all the things that we're ta- that everybody talks about during the day. You know, but you're talking about it with your close friends, your close family. You're not breaking out of your shell and having these same conversations with people that you don't know or people from different backgrounds. And I think that's where the magic takes place is that when these individuals who don't know each other, don't trust each other, don't necessarily um, know too much about each other, uh, come together to have these really raw conversations that, you know, are very balanced and they're very honest. Oh, yeah, and I think you, you, you make some really great points here. And the reason why I say you're making great points, I have had the experience of uh, having done a lot of training and development, and I've done, done it in seven different countries. And, you know, when the first time I went to Tokyo, and I was trying to teach them management training, and everything they kept saying to me is, no, we can't do that here. No, we can't do that here. That's not what we do. And, and I kept right. trying to assure them, but wait a minute, this is what your management wants you to do. And they said, really? I had to bring in the vice president who hired me to assure them that everything I was saying was okay to say, okay? And, right. and it was so interesting. And then I went to Shanghai, which is uh, basically a communist country, and it was even worse. In fact, there... They were trying to say my name Simkovsky because they they are taught that you always have to use a person's title. So they were trying to say call me Doctor Simkovsky, and of course they couldn't get my last name. So I said, "Well, just right. call me, just call me Fred, call me Freddy. That's good enough." Oh no, we can't call you Freddy. So someone popped up in the back and said, "How about we call you Doc Fred?" Son. Wow. Uh, I said, Doc Fred son? Sure, why not? And and then when I came back to California where I was working, I was walking through the hallway to, to, to my office and I got all these people in the company saying, hey, how you doing, Doc Fred son? The word got back that everybody was calling me Doc Fred and that's why really how I got the name because they couldn't pronounce my last name, okay? That's and of so course, the, the interesting part about that is I couldn't pronounce a lot of their names, and some of the names, you know, over there, Kim is like S- Smith here, okay? So trying to talk to them was very difficult to, you know, I had to learn, I really had to learn not only just the culture, but I actually had to learn, you know, how to speak to them on a daily basis. And, you know, I think that's part of the problem in this country. We don't learn how to speak to others on a daily basis. Even though we're all speaking English, it's still we right. don't think about the cultures people come from. We don't think about their background. We don't think about the right. other person's perspective, do we? Right. No, no, we don't. We actually have a, a perspectives chapter um, because, of, you know, unfortunately for everyone, your perspective is your reality. Yes. And based on your reality is how you make conclusions about your daily life. But to be empathetic and to be understanding, to be flexible, to be fluid, is to be able to uh, look at someone else's reality and understand their point and view of the world, even for a second. Um, I often think about that little piece in our brain that uh, connects us with one another. So when you see someone yawn, chances are you're going to yawn. Or if you see someone fall down and you go, ouch, not that it actually happened to you, but you felt it. And what I mean by that is that there are times where we can feel for other human beings and understand their pain without going through it. And that's what it means to be empathetic. And I feel like if we have more empathy in today's society, we're taking the time to get to know each other, um, 
to better relate to one another and truly get to see what's going on in the lives of different, you know, different individuals. Take them take about a mile in someone else's shoes, it, 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 will, it will certainly help us to be more empathetic to other individual situations. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, you know, I, I really guess the bottom line here is, what do you want the, uh, the readers of Not Another Diversity book, what do you really want them to take away from it? Um, I want individuals to feel challenged, um, about their own understanding of multiculturalism, uh, ethnicity, cultural awareness, and microaggressions. Uh, I think it's really important that whenever we're pointing the finger at someone else, there's always two or three fingers pointed back at us, um, and none of us are perfect. As a diversity trainer, I'm not perfect. There's still a lot of things that I'm learning. There's still a lot of areas that I need to improve in and that I need to perfect. And I'm constantly trying to make myself better. Uh, you know, I want individuals to feel encouraged after reading this book, I want them to feel that they're not alone. This book gives them a voice and that their stories are being heard. Because, again, these stories are told from the view of the other. And I want individuals to be able to find themselves in certain sections of this book. Um, I definitely made it so that it was easily read, um, relatable, and that it would create an environment where individuals can feel comfortable enough to express themselves and to engage with other individuals that may not look like them. Excellent, excellent. Now, I just want to clarify something because I think this is important. A lot of these types of books, they always have God knows how many chapters on theory, okay? Somebody's theory from somebody's doctorate, and I can say that because I have a doctorate. (laughs) Uh, But, you know, this is not about theory. This is really about common sense. How do you go through life Okay, understanding that everybody is not the same. Right, 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 right. You know, in the field of student affairs, we also, we talk about theories all the time, student development theory, identity theory, um, you know, uh, student leadership theory, involvement theory. A lot of this, like you said, is is, is common sense, you know, especially when we're talking about assessment as well. We talk about qualitative data and quantitative data. This This is 10 years of qualitative data, gathering focus groups, surveys, campus climate uh, assessment, being able to just sit down and have personal conversations with individuals and then having conversations with individuals as a larger group, Um, having individuals from all different backgrounds, um, ethnicities, races, um, sexualities, religions, um, colors, creeds, being able to go through these modules and be able to go through these activities to really try to see if there's a conclusion. And there's no conclusion to it, meaning that any individual, no matter what type of educational level that you're on, you'll be able to relate to this book. You'll be able to find yourself in this book, and you'll be able to understand the concepts that are in the book. There's nothing that is so far out that you would need a degree or advanced months of training in order to figure out. Um, it comes from me, and it's written that way because I want other individuals to understand it, most, even at its most basic level. I want individuals to feel it. I want them to think about it. I want them to, you know, a lot of, a lot of the feedback that I've been getting from individuals who have been reading it, who have just sent, you know, sent me emails or wrote to me or called me, said, you know, after, after each and every chapter that I read of your book, I had to put the book down and process. It's not something that you're going to be able to fly through. You could easily fly, fly through this book. It's, an, it's, a, it's 187 pages. So if your goal is to just go through the book, theoretically, you could. Uh, but I haven't met one person yet who has said, you know, I read the book in a day. You know, a lot of people said that a lot of the conversation that's in the book is very heavy. Um, it's very raw. It's very truthful. It's very honest. Um, it's going to give you a lot of food for thought. You know, if you're a baby, you can't eat steak. You just can't. So you have to eat baby food. And for some of these individuals, they're having to take the time to really chew up this steak to really chop it up so that it's so that it's uh, it has the ability to be uh, consumed because a lot is placed in this book. And and I hold no bounds. I make things very truthful. I make them very raw. Um, I try to have a comedic twist to it, but um, it's not politically correct. It, it, it's the things that need to be said. It's the things that. Um, every individual is having, 
these conversations with people that they know and it's being able to just have an avenue um, and a point place to be able to put them out to the public. Oh, yeah, and I think everything you're saying is absolutely important, and I think the reactions you're getting clearly shows that clearly show that they want it, okay? Because, you know, you go from campus to campus talking with God knows the, the, the diversity of people, and I'm sure they're eating this stuff up, aren't they? Yeah, well, they're having fun during the activities. You know, we, I think whenever we talk about diversity, uh, and I always ask individuals at the beginning of my program, someone tell me about diversity. And Dr. Fred, I would tell you 10 out of 10 times every individual says, oh, well, it's the differences of, or, hey, it's all the things that make us different. Or, yeah. you know, they always talk about things that are different. They never talk about the things that bring us together because diversity definitely creates similarities and, and, and creates bridges to connect us as well. Um, and I think that having these similarities allows individuals to, to finally see, you know, we're, we're not really that different. So they eat it up because uh, the things that are similar is that individuals like games, even though you might not be someone who engages with a lot of people, no one really wants to be lonely. Everyone wants to know that they have a voice, that they've been heard, that people get them, that they feel comfortable in an area where they feel accepted. And, you know, having all those components together in one program, I think, certainly makes it successful. Excellent, excellent. So let me do a quick recap, because as usual, we've spoken a whole lot of stuff, okay? This is this book, you know, uh, not another diversity book, is really about, you know, helping people through experience and in this case your experiences with the people out there it also talks about you know that non-biased approach okay to multiculturalism it's about understanding how to be empathetic okay by understanding people's perspective it's about also and this is the bottom line for the book it's really about feeling challenged not feeling challenged that you're doing something wrong but really challenged about you know how do you approach culture in your life how do you approach other people's feelings other people's perspectives how much empathy do you have you know with somebody else's life the way they have to live it you know what are the circumstances they live in okay it's all that is that what we spoke about today yes absolutely you hit it right you hit it right on the head dr fred excellent excellent so this is what i want you to do i want you justin to tell everybody of course how can they get the book and how they can contact justin brown when they want to talk more about this or have you talk in front of their groups Right, right, absolutely. While the book is available on mul uh, a multitude of platforms, uh, you can get the book on Amazon. You can get the book on Amazon Prime. You can get the book um, on Kindle, so it's downloaded to your home device. Uh, you can also uh, find the book at barnesandnoble.com, createspace.com, or at your local library. And if your local library doesn't have it, you can request the book, and it should be shipped to you within three to five business days. Excellent, excellent. And, and, and Justin, how can they contact you direct if they want to talk with you? Yes, um, all inquiries about doing diversity training or all inquiries that, you know, talk about the book or if you want to have a, a book signing or meet the author, you can definitely contact me via email. That is justinbrown331 at gmail.com. Again, that's Justin Brown. 331 at gmail.com. Excellent, excellent. You know, Justin, this has been exactly like the first one. So interesting, so involved. You know, you're doing great work out there, and you're definitely making a difference in this world, and I think we all know that you truly matter. Justin, thanks for being on the show again. Remember to go to my website, LifeCareerBusinessCoach.com, for more information and assistance you may be looking for. There is a link there for this show, Visions of Success Internet Talk Radio. 
where you can listen to replays and more interviews on a regular basis. And be sure to subscribe to my monthly newsletter for more great learning and insight. This show airs every Friday and was hosted by Amazing Women of Power Radio Network and in conjunction with Raven International Network. Have a great day and you can get it done.